Hello there, fellow humans, and welcome to update 10.8. And like a lot of recent updates, not a lot happened, but the things that did happen are gonna be very significant. At the first, we start off with some good news. The terrible skill-based matchmaker is now finally removed. It doesn't mean it's never gonna be back, but it is gonna be gone. We have accumulated a ton of useful stats and data. Well, you have accumulated the stats that it's not working. Let's assume that the matchmaker is seven individual 1v1s rather than a 7v7 team. If you have seven individual 1v1s and one side wins two individual 1v1s and the other side wins five individual 1v1s, if you would pit the players against each other, like you start at the best, go to the worst, yeah, which team is going to win that entire fight if one team wins two 1v1s and the other one wins five? You're going to create incredibly unfair matches with that. That, that should have been obvious from the start, but... What I do not like about this is that at the same time as you're averting that terrible matchmaker, they could have also made a massive improvement to the old types of matchmaker, and that is mediums and light tanks are now in the same class, and they're always equal, right? If you have one team that has two medium tanks, the other side has a medium and a light tank. If one side has one light tank, the other side can have a medium. If one side has four mediums, the other one can have two mediums and two light tanks, for example. But the number of mediums and light tanks should always be the same on both teams, because that is how you create a lot fairer match and a lot better match for the game. Because the medium tank fight often doesn't last as long as the heavy tank fight. So if you have two mediums against one medium, the two mediums beat the one medium, attack the heavies from the back, congratulations, game over. We have improved graphics as well, which... Here's the vehicles. Wow. Then we have the premium becoming collector. That on its own is not a bad thing. I'll get to that later. Let's first talk about the useless thing, and that is you can now once again purchase different overpriced camouflages and new overpriced camouflages for these four vehicles. Congratulations. Go and uh, waste your money away. This is where the important bit comes in, and I wanted to make a separate video on this, but let's just mush it in here. Premiums becoming collectors is on its own a good thing for the balance of the game, because if you can't nerf a vehicle, you're also less likely to buff it. For example, a TIFT 4A2 is a very strong vehicle, while as a pilot is a very awful vehicle. Now, if you were to buff the pilot, and you would over buff it, you make the pilot way too strong, you then can't nerf that vehicle again, so you're less likely to buff it as well. So being able to nerf and buff a vehicle is a lot better for the overall health of the balancing game, because if you release a premium tank that is way too strong, you then can't nerf that vehicle, and that becomes a problem, because a premium tank that is better than the tech tree vehicle, at a decent price, is always going to be valuable. A premium tank that is the same performance, or less performance, than a tech tree vehicle is always going to be less valuable at any time, at the same price, essentially. So you always only want to buy the premium tanks that are better, than the tech tree counterparts, otherwise you're just wasting your money. This can fix that problem. If you release a completely OP collector vehicle, you can then rein it in, you can nerf it, so you can solve that problem later. Obviously, not introducing a completely OP tank in the first place would solve that problem, but if you introduce a terrible vehicle, like for example the STRV-81, which is completely pointless, you could then adjust that vehicle to make it more purchasable and make you want to spend more money. So in that regard, in the balance department, that makes a lot of sense to turn the premiums into collectors. And now, there's always the argument of like, oh, how dare they change that? It, it's always been a premium. I bought a premium. Well, no, you didn't actually buy anything, really. You obtained a license to use the vehicle. Just like your account, you don't own any of these vehicles right here. You don't, it is not your property. It's always Wargaming's property. So, in reality, Wargaming can do whatever they want and you can't really do anything about it. What you can do is stop spending money. That's how you tell Wargaming you don't like a change they're making. Because Wargaming can essentially change anything they want about the game because it's entirely their property at all times. The only thing you can do is tell Wargaming, I don't like this, I'm not gonna spend money anymore, change it. That is your voice in the game, your wallet. If you're already free to play, Complain about on Discord, I guess. This change on its own is a good thing for the balancing, if not for the other change. Surprise, motherfucker. Here's, here's the first damning piece of evidence. The word abuse. Using the word abuse in this situation, where you have somebody selling a collector vehicle, purchasing another tank, playing the other tank, selling the other tank, purchasing the original one again, because you can sell it at the same price as you can buy it back. So you can always trade your gold back and forth. Now, here's the problem. The fundamental problem with gold. 
Gold is a economically worthless currency. Gold has no real value whatsoever. So if you trade gold around, if you purchase something with gold, Wargaming doesn't earn anything from that. Wargaming only earns if you transfer your real currency, your euros, your pounds, your dongs, I don't know, into gold. That's when Wargaming earns the money. As soon as it becomes gold, the value, the economic value, instantly drops to zero. Gold is worth zero dollars. So if you trade gold back and forth, Wargaming doesn't earn anything from that, which is terrible. So if you have a lot of collector vehicles, you can basically just sell all of your collectors that have been, or sell all of the premiums that have been turned into collectors right here, right? Because I have like a hundred premium tanks, I could sell all of them and then obtain a new premium, uh, a new collector vehicle, and then just always trade the tanks between each other, right? I could just have a hundred collectors, sell fifty of them, buy twenty new tanks, then sell those twenty new tanks and purchase 20 of the original tanks that I sold back, and I can essentially just trade my gold around, which is a great thing for the consumer, but it's a terrible thing for Wargaming because Wargaming doesn't make any money off gold. Yeah, that is abusing the system, basically, which is just using a va valueless currency in its optimal way. That's very, very nice. The community really appreciates the directness of what the goal is of this change, right? It's... It's also been said that it the, the system is way too player-friendly, which you kind of want the game to be player-friendly, right? Because it, it's supposed to be fun. But no, this is 100% an attempt at milking you even further. So what do you think about it? Put it down in the comments. Do you like being milked for no reason whatsoever? I don't know, maybe you're into that. How bad is this change? Because nobody's going to think this is a good change, but how bad is it actually? Well, maybe Wargaming's accountants are really going to like it. If you have a collector vehicle, you turn a premium into a collector. You now have that collector. Let's assume the TF4A2. The TF4A2 gets nerfed. That's too strong. You sell the TF4A2. At the same time, the pilot gets buffed. You don't have the pilot. So, you sell your collector TF4A2 for gold. You buy your buffed pilot with gold. You sell the bad tank. You buy the good tank. Right? Then, 10 updates later, Wargaming decides we're going to buff the TF4A2. We're going to nerf the T25 pilot. Sell the pilot, because it got nerfed, you rebuy the T4A2, right? So you can always have the best vehicles in your garage by trading collectors back and forth, if you, if you nerf them. But you can't do that anymore, so now you're basically just getting kicked in the balls. Because normally, this would be a great change on its own. But because you now cannot sell those vehicles anymore for gold, and you can't trade a nerfed collector for a buffed collector or a better collector that completely invalidates this change in its entirety that makes this change useless that completely flips the script around and makes it absolutely awful for the player because wargaming can now nerf a premium tank and you can't do anything about it because if you sell it and you buy another tank for it you get no value out of that have the players been abusing the system or is this wargaming abusing the player make even more money. I don't know. I can't answer that for you, but I can ask you to like and subscribe. What do you think about the update? Pretty big nothing burger that has a lot of implications for the game, though. If I wouldn't have already stopped spending money on the game, I would have stopped spending money now. What do you think? Put it down in the comments. Let's have a discussion about this, because that's what these videos are for.